Hello, I'm Chris, and this is my cutting your flooring around your toilet, shower base, or whatever fixtures you have. We have this contour gauge. You'll find this in the levels, plumb bob section, and you see what it does. If you don't have one of these, you can use a piece of cardboard. We'll be demonstrating that as well. So we are using Traffic Master Rigicore Vinyl. This is waterproof, underlayments attached, and it works really freaking good. I'm impressed. That's what it is. In case you're interested so this is a wood filler i use for any imperfections just sand it down so this is affordable but still heavy duty flooring see how thick it is the problem is we're going to be making cuts on it like that and it can be a little difficult just to score that so we may be needing some kind of saw like this or some other tool we'll figure that out when we get there but i'm pretty sure we're going to be able to cut it close and then sand it down perfect like we need it so that is a sander. You can get this in four inch, four and a half, five inch, whatever you use. But we have a 50 grit sanding disc on there. This wasn't my first choice, but it's the only one I could find. And for example, you just kind of push it down and it gives you the exact contours. And you transfer this to your piece, mark it and cut it. Tool I believe was under $20. If you don't want to buy one, don't worry. We'll be doing it with a piece of cardboard where we're just gonna cut, slice, cut, draw. You'll see that in a little bit. So the first idea is using a scrap piece, cutting it out and then transferring it to your good piece. So our scrap passed the test 100%. Let's transfer that cut. All right, so scoring a piece with the razor blade is the ideal way to cut this. But in this case, we can't really do it. We can only score one side of it. We're gonna to have to use a saw, use your safety glasses. So if you're gonna cut it with a saw, do it away from where you're working. It's gonna shoot little pieces everywhere. See those little pieces that got flung everywhere? You wear your safety glasses because those will go in your freaking eyes. So then we can score this So we got that piece notched out perfect. Always have a piece of your trim right here and check your gaps. All right, everything looking beautiful. So we just added one more piece. Now we're up to our first contour cut. We found a scrap that's just the right length. So we're just coming in square, slowly putting pressure. Okay, so if it's your very first one, we're gonna go ahead and do a practice cut before we try to get the length right. So let's go get this cut. Okay, be super careful when you cut this at an angle, you can slip and cut your hands. Let's try to score this piece and see if that works. And there's a problem when you try to snap a curved bend because it wants to bow the piece up and this stuff is super rigid. So you risk breaking everything off when you score it hopefully we got away with it trying to snap on a curve we actually damaged the piece more than we really wanted to it pulled up a lot of extra let's see what really happened might still be good okay so trying to score a curve cut is not a good idea but we did not damage it let's go check out our fitment i mean it looks okay from right here but it's actually not good enough okay so we take our sharpie kind of mark where we need to trim it a little bit and that's why i chose this right here because it's going to allow us to control it while we shape it so then you can either fix this one so our official measurement off the toilet was 17 and a quarter so a safer way would be to score it straight and then sand out that curve much safer like this. So it can take a few minutes to make these cuts perfect, but once you get them perfect, everything looks so much better. 
Okay, so we got the gauge on there already. We're gonna have to use a full piece and notch it out for right there. Let's check this out. And just keep in mind, it's gonna mirror the shape on the other side in case you have to set this down for a weird cut. The only thing that's difficult about using this is there's no way to really square it. So you just have to eyeball it. So then we have 15 and a half from the toilet. Now what happens a lot when you're trying to cut stuff out is you can cut the opposite. So go ahead and mark what gets cut out so you don't get it confused. And then this little piece right here is just one inch. So you can get these for about $5, framing square. Mark that, remember we're cutting that out. We're just using this for a straight edge. Okay, so our cut is gonna leave us with this long, delicate piece. It's best to make this entire cut with a saw. Contour gauge, we got it perfect the first time. I just wanted to show that cut because trying to score a piece lengthwise, it's real easy to slip and screw your cut up. Try to use a saw if you can. Let me go ahead and get this filled in. So we had that whole section right there pivoting on that little thin piece. So I had to get that big level to make sure it's straight. This is super critical. When we actually moved it over, we changed our gaps a little bit. So we will have to trim a little bit back. So those two cuts were easy. Now we have two contours that are too big for the gauge we bought. So we have to use a template. We're gonna use cardboard. So instead of trying to go hunt down cardboard, we just use the cardboard box. All right, take your time on this. Do not rush through this, man. Take your freaking time. All right, now we got it. So what we wanna do is go ahead and move our template over right here where it fits there and then trim that last. So let's go get this cut. So with the template back in place, we're able to take a measurement right here. So 19 and a half. Let's just go a little bit bigger to start. We do not want to screw this up. Should be at a 45 and look, we already possibly screwed up. Either way, let's just go ahead and cut it perfect because that's all we have right there well maybe a little bit less and we possibly have ruined this piece so you see we still have some fitting to do i should have cut that at a perfect 45. let me go ahead and get this fit and we'll see if it works or not so how the floor is pivoting on that little section we're trying to add layers to straighten it up i think we have it straight as we're gonna get it. Now our gaps are touching the toilet. We are gonna have to take all this back out and make those gaps bigger. Same thing right here. We got lucky they were exactly 45s with the speed square. And we're gonna have to trim all that back. So in case this is the only video you're watching, let's do the flip trick and score it to get the measurement on this piece. It's gonna stick in there like that. So we flip it around. Do not ever butt it up against the wall. Give it about a quarter inch. Mark it. Okay, so to score the piece, I use a speed square. Just get it right there on the mark. You're not trying to force it down. That can be dangerous. Just do a lot of little scratches like that and progressively push down a little bit as it cuts into the flooring. Okay, and it just snaps. So here's a goofy one. You have two contours on both sides. Do the hard one first. So the contour gauge is not big enough for this right here. We can only use it on the toilet side. So we're gonna have to do the cardboard method. So any cardboard will work, but you have to have the straight edge on it somewhere. And in less than five minutes, I have it cut out and ready. Let's test this fit. Beautiful, perfect. So now we need to make this template. We're gonna use the exact same piece.
So this comes down about three and a half. We have 19 and a quarter. All right, so that means this has to be about three and a half. That's why templates are so important. I cut it kind of short to be careful and it turned out I should have cut it where the template told me to. So after a few minutes, we got our cut. Beautiful, perfect. Sharp, looking sharp. Oh no, did we cut it too short? Well, that's why we have our trim piece to check. No, it's perfect. Okay, so you see the progress we made? Now, it did take me four hours to do this, but I take my time on stuff like this and never rush because that's when you screw up. I did not waste any flooring. Everything worked out 100%. Now, as soon as we get those back pieces in there, we're gonna take this out again. But before we do that, we're gonna mark any gaps that need to be extended and we're going to try to give it just about an eighth inch of a gap around everything you see how you still have to make that a little bit bigger you have to have that gap in there because your floor will do crazy things it could buckle it could move out and cause a little groove like that so when you're going around multiple things like that you have to give it the clearance only eighth inch around toilets it says a quarter inch, but we got quarter inch gaps and bigger around everything else. That gap looks too big right there. Well, that's why we have our trim and you see it covers everything. Beautiful. So everything's looking good in here. Remember, you got to give it a gap all the way around. Do not butt flooring up against any hard fixtures like that. It will buckle, separate and go crazy. In a bathroom and kitchen, you have to use waterproof flooring, not water resistant. Do not ever use paper laminate flooring even the manufactured wood real wood floors that snaps together like this that stuff is not waterproof i've seen it already buckle up and it looks horrible high dollar fail get you waterproof flooring like this and you will be happy like i am future videos on this bathroom coming together it's a small one but it's going to be a beautiful one if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and thanks for watching